uh, a big deal this week. Another Spotify podcasting acquisition uh, for that Danny, that kind of podcasting range, a hundred to three hundred million dollars. This one's two hundred and thirty five million. Uh, tell us about Megaphone. Megaphone, I, I think, started actually as, as Panoply or, or Panoply, um, which was out of the Slate group. And, and originally, I, I believe it started as a content house. So it was focused on building shows around Vox. Um, they also worked with BuzzFeed and the Wall Street Journal. And then I think over time, they learned that content is hard. Uh, I think we all <laughs> learned that. And uh, they sort of pivoted into being an ad network. And so they're, they're helping with analytics placements, actually selling the ads, sort of doing what, what display advertising did for the web, you know, providing a business model that's not subscription um, around the podcast space. And, um, you know, uh, Spotify bought them, uh, as you said, in between 100 and 300, the, the quoted price was 235 million bucks. Um, and that's like, what, I think the third or fourth large uh, podcast play that Spotify has made, both on the, the, the content side with Joe Rogan, uh, getting a $100 million contract. And then Spotify has also acquired a couple of different studios and other technology plays. So clearly, you know, tripling, quadrupling down in the podcast space. Yeah, I mean, zooming out even, I feel like a lot of media companies are are putting eggs in the basket of back-end infrastructure as um, what's going to be a sustainable part of their business. We saw the Washington Post do this, which has been pretty successful. And, and it's this growing conversation that content is definitely a commodity and the exclusive deals that Spotify um, is is grabbing is probably like very much eating up the market of competitors who are trying to also do content it's it's like thriller and tiktok yeah distribution matters one thing i i saw though in a chart was that spotify's market share in the world this was last night when i was looking up spotify stats i forgot we were going to talk about on the show i was just prepping by accident uh had actually seen some market share declines globally in the last i think it was 12 or 18 months and now to be clear spotify is still growing its user base paid subscribers etc but the market that it's, it's working in is getting larger as well I, I wonder if spotify is really trying to defend its long-term market share because in the music world Everyone has access to the same 50, 60 million songs. This is their way to really stand out, maybe have some pricing flexibility to have better margins, to have a little more control over their revenues. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I, I'm just disappointed that podcast companies are never worth more than roughly $300 million. And they're probably well, being bought for business chances, not revenue, right? Oh, I, I think one of the stats we have here, which I, I think is just completely nuts, is that Megaphone apparently is selling just a tenth, 10% of their ad inventory they have available on the platform. Now, that's supposed to go up to, according to our notes here, 70% with Spotify's acquisition. So Spotify is this ad sales team. You know, they're able to do that. They obviously, if you, if you don't pay for premium on Spotify, you do have an ad um, network. So they, they're going to be able to plug some of that inventory into podcast. But like, to me, that I think is part of the, the, the question here is like, why is that ad inventory not being purchased? They have 5,500 shows, tons of inventory. You know, why aren't there buyers in that market? I don't know. I think, you know, this is the same question I ask about the, the internet. Like, I watch sports on TV and I, I see the same like six ads and I'm like, guys, you do know that the first time I heard this, I blocked it out and I've had you on mute ever since. <laughs> but that, that ad market is enormous. It's worth tens of billions of dollars. And yet an advertisement on the internet is worth nothing. And I never understood the, the, the reason why television ads are, are the gold standard of value for brands, but the web is worth nothing. And this is the same question with the podcast. People are currently listening to us right now on, on, on your headphones or in your car, wherever you are. Um, and we're talking directly to you. You would think that this medium would be the strongest place for advertisements to come because you're not distracted probably. Um, but instead it's not. And so I, I'm curious if it's just a mismatch in, in supply and demand and then brands are loath to change tack away from bombarding me on NBA re reruns. I will say, I mean, you know, it may be a disappointment from the podcast world, right? We're, we're still expecting this kind of unicorn outcome. It is a really good exit, though, in the ad network space. I mean, ad tech is one of these categories that has just been eviscerated over the years as, as Google and Facebook has sort of drained all revenues and money out of that market. Um, so I actually took it as a strong sign of like, you can actually build an ad network, even in 2020, it's still worth hundreds of millions of bucks. Um, it's just not the big two that are going to buy you in that duopoly. As a kind of related aside, this is all making me think about when billboards were a thing, like a year it's still, ago. Still a thing. Still a thing. But a year ago, you couldn't walk down San Francisco, any street in San Francisco without like being like bombarded with Breck signs and yeah. if what's the other one? Ease. Um, and there was like a Burning Man <laughs> billboard um, in North Beach. I mean, I, I'll joke. I mean, Brex also bought a cafe. So I, I don't know if their strategy was the <laughs> yeah. smartest. But I will say, I mean, one of the more productive, I mean, not that I cover the ad network space hugely, but one of the more productive spaces, subspaces in that category is out of home advertising, right? So all the branded advertising, um, you know, in recent years, there have been a lot of startups that have tried to figure out who's actually walking through Grand Central seeing that right. billboard, right? And, and what they're getting to is like, 
the people are walking to like one Vanderbilt, they're going to leave this door and they're going to see these three out of home <laughs> advertisings. And the people in that building are all financial people, right? So they'll all sell, you know, particular stock trades or whatnot. It's similar to how if you watch Fox News in DC, in the DC circuit and in, in the local affiliate for Fox, you're going to get a very different advertising picture because people are targeting lobbying dollars and, and other works, you know, for, for lawmakers and policymakers in DC. Uh, people are getting smarter about out of home. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that like Burning Man, which by the way is totally off brand to buy a billboard in anywhere, uh, but would target like a North Beach consumer right. um, to optimize their ad spend. 